Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 14th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remco came across an interesting attack against one of his honeypots. Now, the initial login just used a standard password root, and then it did a number of interesting fingerprint attempts. At least that's what it looks like. For example, it's looking for MicroTik routers using a command whose output recently changed. So this could, for example, then be used to discern what version of a router OS is running on this particular router. It also checks if it's on an Android device, interestingly. And then it checks if any crypto coin miners are running on the system. At least it checks for processes that contain the word miner. Remco has seen these attacks only from a fairly limited set of Russian IP addresses. Now, of course, an IP address doesn't mean attribution, but on the other hand, we have seen a lot of talk about these attacks against routers, and this particular attack does not look like your standard sort of Mirai bot. If you have seen anything like this in your network, in your honeypots, and uh, maybe you have a little bit more data to contribute, uh, let us know. And then we have more details how to exploit one of the more interesting vulnerabilities that Microsoft patched this week. This was a vulnerability in Cortana, the voice assistant that's included in Windows 10. The problem here is that when you're using Cortana, even on a locked system, and you start typing while Cortana starts listening, then you actually get sort of this contextual help menu that does reveal at least file names that are stored on the system. Cortana uses the indexing of these files in order to deliver results and apparently made them accessible even on a locked system via this contextual menu. And this leak goes beyond just the file names. If a text that you're typing does show up in one of these files, then Cortana will display the context of this particular text. So for example, if you're typing password, what you may see is the word password followed by the password the user saved in a text file. In the worst form of this particular vulnerability, it can even be used to execute code, but that may not always be possible. Cedric Kochen and Steve Powolny, who discovered this vulnerability, even give step-by-step -step instructions on how to log into a system using this vulnerability. Regardless of whether or not you applied the patch, it's probably best practice to turn off Cortana on a locked system. And I believe it's actually not enabled by default. And today, the Docker team finally removed 17 Docker containers from the official Docker hub that contained malicious code. The problem here in part was that it was well known for quite a while that these images were malicious, but it took a while for the Docker team to actually take action on them. While these images were present in the Docker Hub, they were downloaded millions of times. Docker is really more a package management system. It allows you to download software, including all dependencies for this particular software. But unlike virtual machines, it doesn't attempt to isolate that software from the system it's running on. So for example, one malicious thing that some of these images did was to run scripts that would then access the slash Etsy directory or add cron jobs to the host, which then of course would make the infection more persistent. All 17 images were created by one particular Docker user, Docker123321, and that account was created just about a year ago. To trick users into installing these images, they included popular tools like, for example, Tomcat and MySQL. And like what we have seen so often, in addition to the actual valid software, you also get malicious software, like, for example, crypto coin miners in this case. 
And then we have yet another hardware flaw in Intel CPUs. This one affects Core and Xeon processors and essentially allows users to access data from the floating point unit, the math processor, which of course is also used for a lot of cryptographic operations. An attacker could use this flaw to, for example, read cryptographic keys from the FPU. On the good side, in order to mitigate this vulnerability, you don't need yet another microcode update. It can be taken care of by the operating system. And all recent operating system, like recent versions of Linux and Windows appear to be safe. Now, one exception here, Windows Server 2008, apparently is still not patched at this time. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.